and it's headphones nail. What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. So, got a bit of an overview of stuff to uh, review for this week. Um, nothing special or unusual aside from the couple of gameplays and couple of shows that I've been watching. Um, I haven't had a chance to really watch too much else for this week. So, um, I'm just going to be reviewing that and then I'll have a quick update on uh, Android helm screen layout that can be done all in custom live wallpaper maker assuming you have the proper background image. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So to start it off, um, I did continue to play Roller Coaster Tycoon. So I'm on the Emerald Group level carts and coasters. Um, this is notable for a couple of long um, go-kart tracks and um, a couple of long wooden roller coasters. The big thing here for this map is that you do have a lot of easy ways to collect a lot of money so you can have high priced roller coasters but you have to build them in a lot of or a big hilly map so the trick here is you do want to build rides one by one you can have a mix of preset rides and um custom build rides but you want to make sure that you are pricing your rides high enough because you can um set up your rides to be more high priced to, to collect a lot of money so even if you build a relatively like medium to high price roller coaster um you can make the money back pretty quickly so um the big thing here is you just want to make sure you're building to your advantage for the roller coasters um you're not you know spending over like huge amounts as far as roller coasters go or building stuff through tunnels and things like that building a lot of food stalls continuing to have a lot of people um um, sweepers and maintenance guys and all of that sort of stuff um, just to keep your park rating up attract a lot of guests and if you do that you'll be able to pretty easily make it through the um, park objectives um, in this case I did have a pretty long um, log flume ride which generally worked it you know went up and down a little bit later in the uh, play through the level, but if you price it right, then you know adjust it down a little bit and things like that. Then you should be okay as far as keeping people in the queue. And basically, once when you have those um, levels that have a high um, guest count requirement to beat the level, the thing you want to do is make sure your queues are long enough so you keep people in the queues as long as possible. And that way, um, and not to you know make it a slow line you want to keep it moving but you want to have the queue as long as possible so more people are in the park at any given time so with that being said i'll continue my gameplay of those levels um but overall a pretty straightforward level and the link will be in the show notes as far as my playthrough video and how i built the rides but like i said you want to build into the um, environment so if you're you know you have a lot of hills you want to um, create a base for the track, but then use the mountain, you know, for the lift or the drop or things like that. So you're not spending a lot of money on um, stilts and construction costs and like on things like that. It minimizes the cost there. So you have a lot more money to go into the ride and then you're making your money back as quickly as possible. Um, so with that being said, I did have a chance to watch House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 2, Renera the Cruel. An overall compelling episode, uh, listening to a podcast about it and just reaction about Kristen and how he's a weirdly bad character. And for me, I agree, he's not the smartest of characters because, you know, first he was with uh, Rhaenyra and then he's now with Alicent and all of that. And then he sided with her even though, and like, he doesn't want to be, he didn't want to be used as a political pawn or um, basically a male uh, prostitute I guess but now that he's doing that for um, Alicent it's kind of like he's going back on his word but he's basically moving up in the world he's now become I guess what was a hand of the king or whatever so and then it was fun. it made me laugh when he gave the speech to the evil twin brother about doing his duty and you know being honest and that whole thing and I'm like dude you're 
exactly like that guy. You just have the backing of the princess or the queen or whatever. So um, he's not necessarily a bad um, or um, an evil guy. He's just a he's trying. To, he's a you know in a weird position of trying to protect the royal family and then doing what they say. So he's not really you know Joffrey or Ramsay Bolton level evil. He's just you know he's using the power he has to keep himself in the game. So. Overall, a good episode. Can't wait to see more, but that's really all there is for that. I mean, I was kind of hoping we got to see from the trailers. It seemed like we were going to go to Heron Hall, so maybe next episode, but I kind of want to see that play out. I don't know the timeline for that, but I'm kind of hoping it's in this period where we get to see the burning of Heron Hall, so um, we'll see about that. Um, I also had a chance to catch up on Star Wars Acolytes, so Season 1, Episode 5. And overall, a good episode because of all the lightsaber battles we have. It's kind of a three-way battle between the evil guys and all the Jedi. Um, we get to unmask the, um, the red lightsaber guy, and it turns out we have another version of Kylo Ren. So not quite who I was expecting, but I actually wanted to see more screenshots of him just to see if I could fit him into my theory of him being, you know, a young Sheev Palpatine or something, and they ended up cloning from him based on his Force potential. And, you know, because of whatever happened with the Jedi, they hold him in stasis or maybe he's a clone. And I mean, for me, my money, I'm going to bet that they're going to do something like that and introduce us to him either being the cl a clone and he was born in the lab created by Plagueis or Tenebris, or they used him and merged his um, force DNA with um the twins and they create an even more powerful being through the force and they create palpatine and because of, they want to try to duplicate what they did with him they create anakin skywalker and all that so i'm kind of hoping that's kind of where they lead with this um i read last week too that we haven't even seen the force whip or the lightsaber whip yet so we'll see how that all happens and comes into play but um in general this was a good still this all feels like transition episodes it's not like it's good or bad but it all depends on how they stick the landing and what purpose they put into this show being put out so um that's why i'm kind of holding to the theory of the um um darth plagueis or darth tenebris being in the um show so if that's the case then um that would work out perfectly if it doesn't um or if he doesn't show up in the show, then that would kind of suck. But um, in any case, we'll see how they'll stick the landing and take it from there. And then to round it out, I did have a chance to play some more Knights of the Old Republic. So this week's uh, main focus was go getting through the Duxin area. So you're, when you head to Andron, there's a space battle and you have to go to Duxin no matter what. So it's actually, and I was thinking when I finished the playthrough that it's probably my favorite part of Knights of the Old Republic 2, just because you have to go through the landings, you learn it's the start world, or it's the start of the Mandalorian Wars, you get to meet, you know, Mandalore in the form of, I think it was Candorus, and then you learn more about the Mandalorian culture and history, how to gain respect and prestige. Um, you help other Mandalorians out, you fight in the battle circle. Um, and then you go get to go explore the jungles of Duxin and um, perform various feats and things like that. So because you're a Jedi learning about the Mandalorian culture, you're kind of encompassing a lot of Star Wars. So I think that's why I like it. And overall, just a, you know, relaxing, straightforward um, um, gameplay and planet to play on, whether you're going light side or dark side. Um, my main recommendation here is to have a um, high tech person in the party when you're on the planet, whether it's T3M4, Goto, or HK47, um, because you want to repair the droids, you want to help um, the Mandalorian guy repair the cables and the satellite dish. Um, I don't think there's any, much else to repair, but that's basically the big thing there. And then, you know, pick locks and get mines and things like that. So you want to have a high demolition skill and things like that. So whether your character has it or you have a character in your party that has those abilities, um, this is one of those things where you want to do that. And then one of the things that I kept forgetting to do prior was to initiate the HK factory um, section of the um, end of the game. So it's part of the restore content mod where 
if you have HK47 in your party and you activate the quest and gather or fight through enough of the HK droids that you meet throughout the game, then you can determine the location of the factory and if memory serves, you either destroy the factory or you can turn reprogram them to get them on your side. So um, I think I got it early enough where you, I can still get to the HK factory and activate it because you need to have a meet up with at least three teams of the HK droids. So from where I'm at in the gameplay, I'm going to meet them at least once more on Onderon and then once on Korriban. Um, so once I'm done with Onderon, I'm, I am going to um, go back or maybe even before I go to Onderon, I'm going to try and see if I can go to Dantooine and um, Narshada and um, recruit the Mandalorians and see if I can initiate um, another... Um, meeting with some HK droids so that should take care of the third one and that'll auto that should automatically load the or prompt the game to have the HK factory towards the end before we go to Malachor 5. I forget exactly at what point it is but it's, real, it's towards the end of the game and it's a pretty fun part of the game too don't get me wrong it's a good HK factory you just have to remember to after the initial room you have to go right to you know do the reprogramming and get the spikes and then go left to do the reprogramming but um, in any case, I got it activated, so I'm gonna try and probably do that as the next gameplay is see about going to going back to Dantooine and Narshada to do the third set again, which I don't know if it's gonna it's even possible anymore, but um, depends on how many more I meet up with or um, even if you know more show up on if there's a second set on Andron or something that uh, or even for um, Korriban or something, but that's why I'm not sure if, if I might have done it too late, but I'm hoping not. But in any case, all the gameplay videos are up on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash n one If you have any feedback, comments, um, updates, or anything like that, you can comment on any of the social media sites. Um, they're all linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews, uh, which also has links to past episodes, subscription links, ways to support the show and all of that. If you're a supporter on the Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01, you can get early access to the show, the, a link to the YouTube version early as well, and all of that good stuff, uh, ad-free version of the podcast and that sort of stuff. So that is all for this particular episode. So thanks for tuning in and until next time.